Hello there and welcome back. Today I want to show you one of my favorite pedal chain that I like to use and it's just using the Fairfield circuitry uh, effects. So as you might notice by now I'm a big fan of their products. I use the shallow water extensively in a lot of production that I do and they've been so kind to send me uh, to test the meat mod and the long life. So before starting I did uh, another video that will be on my Patreon where I did a step by step, step by step creation of these tracks that I'm gonna use. I love to use this pedal with the OP-1 I think they are a great match, especially for soundscape, uh, texture work or ambient things. Uh, in the Patreon video I will, I will go through this track that I did and then slow it down and another track that I did uh, in the video itself. So, and it's more like a simple loop piano. And the concept behind this setup is uh, to create one loop and then modify it with sound and go in a kind of direction that for this case was inspired by the degradation tape of uh, William Basinski. Uh, but also there's a lot of inspiration uh, on PBO uh, music that I really, really love. The other concept is having a very simple setup. In this case, I'm using the OP-1 that I know it's not the most um, easy instrument to have because it's pretty expensive, but I love it to death. So it's one of my uh, most beloved possession. But you can do this with any other, even mono synth. Um, it's just creating a loop that resonates with you and then uh, ruined it, let's say, in a good way with these uh, lo-fi uh, textural effects. So Patreon, and that's a great way to support me. The other way to support me, all the link down below, you can buy things and hopefully are there, they are available. I know that during this COVID time, it's very hard to find any of these, a lot of things to buy, but that would be another way to support me or subscribe to my channel here, pay me a coffee and I'll be happy. Anyway, let's go through this pedal and let's hear what they does. So, let's pick a piano sound and, and then we will do with a synth sound. Shallow Water, I talk about this guy uh, other time, but this is uh, the Fairfield Circuitry episode, so let's go again through it and uh, um, I recommend you to go and check the uh, manuals of all of these things because I read them but my uh, terminology might not be spot on so as you might know I use things as they come I hardly read the manual right away I just love when things are self-explanatory and this pedal thank god thank the gods are very easy to use so shallow water it's my first stage in this chain I try different iteration, part of putting it at the end, in the middle, but I like it at the beginning because it starts right away giving me the kind of vibe that I want. So this is, would be a clean sound. And this is... So the it has many different controls and it does this very specific thing that sometimes can be very subtle. I like to use it pretty, pretty aggressively. So mix, usually it's at the 100%. You have the uh, rate and uh, the depth, basically the, um, the side, the modulation that is happening. So. This is, dump is, uh, it's also another control that goes together that is uh, 
dampens actually the effect so like this is no dampening and you can hear sometimes it's hard to hear these effects on like short percussive or, or with the strong attack sound but when you have a long decay you can hear it so I used to take the dampen a little rate it's always like this and I like to go with the depth a lot because it's what makes you feel the effect then you have a low pass filter that in this case we have a very let's change the sound that sound is already muffled because it's a felt piano so now you hear how, how it kills the high end it's it's interesting but considering that I have two more pedal that will degrade the sound somehow because I want it to degrade the sound I like to keep this not engaged and then the volume I noticed that is very important how you uh, do the gain staging with this guy uh, they can add a lot of grittiness to the sound so I like to start with not the maximum volume on my synth or whatever I'm using and I kind of try to keep the same level at least at the stage this could be a sound that it's nice to start with let's hear with the I really like with the very soft pads like this one. So if you want to define what a shallow water is, it's really hard to give it a precise uh, uh, connotation. It's a modula modulation tool. Uh, to me, it's the easiest and most fascinating way to get that kind of cassette sound. I own a cassette recorder and I can, when I bought those, I thought I would get exactly this sound. But truth is, to get these sounds with cassette or tape, you need to have something that doesn't really work well or you have to have the chance to slow the speed a lot or have a ruined tape. So it definitely takes more than getting a Porta Studio or a reel-to-reel -to, -reel to get to this kind of degradation of the sound, this kind of modulation. So if you want to have a box that actually do that, this is the answer. In a previous video that I did, actually last week, I was saying that I have not one complaint about the shallow water except that it's mono. I would really love to have this in a stereo version and I know that tons of people that reached out said that the stereo version would blow their mind. So if Fairfield is listening, there's a lot of money to be made there. Uh, so think about it, Fairfield. So this is for the Fairfield Shallow water. Let's go. I should stop the Fairfield because they are Fairfield. Let's go. I noticed that every video I fixate on a word and I keep saying it. A few videos go were simple. This time I'm gonna be Fairfield. Sorry. This is the meat mode from Fairfield. And so at the core is a delay. But it has few things that are interesting. So you have your basic um, control, time, volume, and uh, feedback, and mix, and tone. So let's start with tone. Let's put mix 100% so you can hear it. is basically a filter, a sort of high pass and low pass filter. It darkens or 
brighten your tone. I notice if you put, put more tone with the more high end, the feedback would be longer. It start to self, no, not self, it start to, to have a the feedback at 100%, so meaning that self feedback, I don't know, uh, very early on. But that's part of the beauty of the pedal because then you can mangle the sound. Volume again, this is where having three pedals that has a volume control, you can decide how much gain adds and having a sort of distortion and grittiness. Time. This is the lowest setting. And this is almost a slap backish. So it's not the longest delay, also it's not tap tempo. So it's a pedal meant to be used as an experiment. How? Experimentalish, I don't know. Then the two uh, specific things that Mito Mode has, it's two circuits. One is a compressor that you can turn on and off. And of course it, it works on the wet effect. This is compressor on. That's it. As you can imagine, the tail of the feedback, it's more present. It's and it level the signal a little. I hope you can perceive that. And then what is more interesting to me is the modulator uh, circuit. It has two steps, one and two. One is like uh, less strong. And two is stronger. So it does somehow something that the shallow water do with the modulation too. The, the shallow water has more of a random kind of modulator, modulation that makes it more, feel more natural that it's something like a cassette. This one is less randomic, it's more uh, predictable somehow. Uh, it definitely sounds beautiful and sounds in line with the aesthetic of uh, perfect circuitry. So it could be the first step if you want one pedal that do both and also it has a EQ basically put together this guy and add a, a delay. Less control, less uh, versatility than having all of three of course but could be a nice first step. My heart of course lies in the shallow water so uh, I would never give this guy away and I would, uh, it really helped me shape my sound last year when I started digging into the ambient and uh, soundscape. Uh, I only had uh, the OP1 and these together a lot of time and uh, it was great, it was great. Also there's a video that I did using these uh, twice, recording the same pattern and then open it up in uh, left and right, you can check it out. And uh, that's a, I'll put it in the link, and that is a pretty interesting way to have a stereo effect. Anyway, let's hear this guy together. Versus. And you hear already how things change drastically. So the last step, it's the uh, long life. Uh, this is the only pedal that actually took a while for me to understand. Uh, it is, it can be many things. 
it's uh, basically a parametric EQ, but uh, depending on the tilt, sec uh, tilt setting, it can be a filter, low pass and high pass, basically tilt, uh, define how the, the EQ works. It self oscillate when it's turned on and off. And it has CV input for uh, the frequency and the resonance. So it's a good pedal for modular Eurorack people. And now that I got the, uh, into modular again, I'm planning to use it as a tool for that. I don't have any filter by now, and I don't know if I'm gonna buy it. I wanna try to use this as a, my last step before uh, going into the mixer as a filter. So I will probably uh, publish something about that later on because I'm still new to the modular now and I'm still learning. So the control, we have a Q that uh, um, basically is your uh, resonance. Gain, it it's boosts the resonance point that you decide. Frequency, it's self-explanatory and tilt so when tilt is fully uh, counterclockwise, it will uh, the pedal will work as a low pass filter. So let's let's take a sound that can. So now it's working as a low pass. If you use it like this. it's gonna be a high pass. In the middle, it's more as a, a notch filter uh, uh, or a parametric EQ where you choose the frequency that you want to push. So, it, it has a It has a pretty uh, wide range of hues. It uh, doesn't come like this, I break it because I drop it, so this now has no cap anymore, kind of look cool anyway. Uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is like uh, I am very driven by aesthetic on stuff and uh, I consider Fairfield Circuit to one of my favorite uh, aesthetical in the aesthetical field pedal. They're, they look so cool. They have this vintage, uh, somehow, uh, I don't know, scientific uh, um, retro tool that I really, really enjoy. So it, it's fun to have them on your table. Make me happy to watch them. I like to use these, usually not on a single sound, but I like to have it on a, uh, a full track, so that's why I recorded a couple of uh, track. So this is what I have. Again, you can check this one on my Patreon. I recorded this track at this speed, then I slow it down. So how does it sound? Let's add first the shallow water. And I go out, I know this is stereo, so I have a TRS or TSR, I forgot, somebody punished me for saying that, but anyway, it's a stereo, whatever, plug here. And it become TS here, TS or TR, no? And I never learn if that is ideal or not. It works and I'm going for a crunchy, lo-fi quality, so it's okay. They're not gonna explode, that's, that's what matter. So first stage. So this is first stage because it set the mood, it set the sound. So I like it to have a first set. This is the setting that I would use. I usually don't mess too much with this guy. Once I set up, it stay like that. Second step, 
מקומית מאוד. There's many ways I can use this guy. One would be having the feedback very long, so it covered the silence part, right? As you can hear. And tone can range from very bright or go low. I kind of prefer the brighter tone here. It's not that tempo. Don't be discouraged by that. Actually, I really uh, recommend to have no top tempo delay in your arsenal because it forces you to think about them in a different way. And also you can play, I love to play with that. Gain staging is really important. I try to keep the first step, same volume. I like to start with a not super hot volume because they tend to distort pretty easily so I'd rather add here when it distorts I don't kinda like it too much so this is perfect and the last stage, it's the our EQ, long life. So it can be another way to. This is where I like to do my star, la, la, last volume state, but this can be a way to define the, the sounds that you record. For example, in this case, I can cut the low end and make it feel it comes from a cassette even more. Or I can use it as a performance tool and have it as a... Just a low pass filter. filter so there's a great concept to me here that I'm probably expanding in the future and would be having your OP1 or whatever synth you have with a lot of loops very simple loop and then use pedals to perform so you're not gonna create any music but you're just playing with what you already have and it's very simple. If, if you go on my Patreon, you will see how I do one of this kind of loop with the tape uh, vibe in like a minute, because the workflow on this uh, uh, tool is amazing. So this is another one. This is just a piano, uh, and this would be at 100% speed. <coughs> Sorry. And I recreated it, this one to kind of mimic what I did before to show uh, how easy it is. So this would be the clean sound. And this would be... So at this point, I already like this. I would record it and have it for future use, but since I have my other effects in the mixer ready to go, let's add something else. And this, uh, like what I would do, it's first step, the Aventide space. This is adding my higher end, then Benidab Echo with some modulation. Subtle. And the third step, microcosm and uh, that by other room. This had, uh, I noticed that the uh, death by audio room had a lot of, uh, mm, I would say, 
width in the stereo field. So this could be it, this could be a track. Now this comes from a two bar loop, so it's a little repetitive, but I love it. Uh, let's see how we did previous one. Quick thing, as you can hear, the other track was very heavy in the low end. So I had to use this as a high pass filter and cut it a little. Right now, instead, this other track need more low end. So I can play with it and this could be a tool where I, uh, on the fly, control the EQ in a very simple and effective way. turning down the other effects and we go back to just our fair filtered one it's a great tool also this chain to record single instrument and have in your sample bank something that works when I hear that crunchiness it's too much for me so I like to turn it down the volume. And this could be great to just have... Whatever. The amazing part of this full chain and thing is like I never have a clue on the chords I'm doing. And luckily enough, they sound good. So, should you study music theory? Yes, because what is this? Who knows? What is this? Not a clue, but it sounds great. So I guess it's muscle memory and randomness. I, I embrace it and I love it. Okay, so that's about it for today. Uh, if you want some recommendation on which pedal you should start with, uh, my heart lies in uh, the shallow water uh, it really helped me uh, to shape my sound but it's a very specific pedal uh, it does what it does brilliantly but it might be not as useful so before jumping on it you need to be you know sure that that's what you want so i highly highly recommend and i try many other kind of modulator for this kind of stuff this for me is the best uh, there's other that has different kind of vibe, different kind of, so it depends what you want to use it, but for my use, I, I find it uh, unbeatable. The meat mode is a very interesting uh, delay. It could be the best bet to start for you guys because it has a tone control, so you, you can use it as an EQ. You have a compressor, you have a modulator, and it's a delay, so it's a... Uh, very nice box and the uh, eq and filter this could be very good if you have a euro rack system more to come of course when i try with that again you go if you want crystal clear super nice bright polite sounding stuff this might not be your best bet but if you want vibe if you want melancholia if you want uh, something that makes you feel you are taping it and waiting 20 years before listening to that tape again, this is the easiest and best way to go. Plus, I want to have all of these on my wall because they look so cool. Uh, then, if you want to help the, to sustain uh, my uh, mission and my channel, 
please again check the link and buy using those uh, affiliate link it's gonna cost the same to you but it will help my um, endeavor here there's also the other possibility that is becoming my Patreon member. It's uh, I publish there weekly and there's a lot of more content and more specific thing and goodies and we are building a community and that is uh, definitely the best way to keep me afloat. That said, I think it's all for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here all the time. I'll see you next week. Ciao.